Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 3 on Angle Pairs. Now, in the last lesson, we actually defined what an angle was, right? An angle as a geometric object is simply two rays put together that have a common starting point. We also saw in the last lesson how to name angles. Using that starting point as the vertex of the angle, we either used a single letter or three letters. We're going to be using the three letter convention a lot today. We saw how to measure angles in terms of degrees, right? And then how to classify angles as acute, obtuse, 90, or straight, depending on their degree measure. Finally, we got a little bit of algebraic modeling going on, and that helped us, you know, figure out the sizes of angles or, you know, just solve for variables. Today, what we're going to be looking at is special types of angle pairs or pairs of angles. Pairs of angles come up a ton in math and in geometry. We're going to see them associated with what we do today. When we work with parallel lines, we're going to see all sorts of different types of angle pairs. So you want to get very good at all sorts of things involving angles, including how to name them, how to think about them, and these different types of pairs. Let's get right into it for the first type of angle pair that we're going to see today. All right, adjacent angles. Now, the word adjacent you may have heard before, or you may not have. Adjacent literally means sitting beside something else. So you could say, those two houses are adjacent to one another. And that would literally mean two houses sitting next to each other. Let's take a look at what adjacent angle pairs are. Exercise number one. Adjacent angles are two non-overlapping angles that share a ray. In the diagram below, all rays drawn start from point M. All right, let's talk a little bit about this whole non-overlapping thing. That's really, really important. Overlapping angles are literally angles that share part of their rotation. So, you know, if I had sort of uh, this angle and then this angle, right, then those angles would overlap. There'd be a little bit of portion in the middle that would overlap. Adjacent angles are two angles that don't overlap and sit right sit beside each other because they share a ray. So let's take a look at letter A. Name four different adjacent angle pairs and their shared ray. All right, well, let's get into it. And let's just start by kind of looking at the picture. So one angle that I can see right away is angle NMP, angle NMP, right? So, uh, that's not an N. Let's try that again. Angle N, M, P. All right. Now, N, M, P has ray M, N and ray M, P. But we could also have another angle that's got ray M, P, and that would be angle P, M, Q, right? So angle P, M, Q will be adjacent to it, and they will share ray M, P, right? And it's kind of cool. This adjacent idea should make a lot of sense here, right? N, M, P is this angle. P, M, Q is this angle. They sit beside each other because they share that common ray. Now, side note, remember, with the three-letter naming system, the letter in the middle has to be the vertex, and side note, that's going to be M in every single one of these problems in this exercise, right? Because that's the vertex of all the angles in this picture, right? The other two letters simply have to be a letter that come from the two rays that make up the angle. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video because there are three additional pairs of adjacent angles on this diagram. I want you to find them and name their shared ray. Go ahead and do that. All right. Well, I'm going to just try to get rid of some of this stuff um, real quick. Let me just erase it. All right. Let's actually stick with angle PMQ, right? This angle right here, PMQ, right? One of the rays, of course, that PMQ has is MQ. Now, we could talk about angle QM r that also has ray mq and sits beside this angle so another angle pair would be angle pmq the second one we dealt with up above and then angle q m r 
and they share ray m q. All right. Now, those were probably the two most obvious pairs of adjacent angles on this picture. But let me erase this real quick, and let's go back to that first angle, angle N, M, P. Right, again, that's this angle. Well, there's another angle on here that also has ray M, P besides P, M, Q, and that would be angle P, M, R, this angle, right? And it's no problem that ray MQ is kind of sitting down the middle of it. That's kind of irrelevant. This is angle PMR, and those share ray MP. Okay? Likewise, right, we could look at that this angle QMR. Let me just erase this. Whoops, QMR down here. And that would also be adjacent to this angle. So angle QMR is adjacent to angle NMQ and MQ, and they share ray MQ. All right? Now, adjacent angles are really important. And we're going to kind of see a little bit of why that is in part B of this problem. All right. Now, I redrew the diagram down here. You're just going to be working off the one that's on your worksheet above. But let's take a look at letter B. Angle NMR is a right angle. And the measure of angle NMP is 40 degrees. If angle PMQ and angle RMQ have equal measures, then what is the measure of angle NMQ? Show how you found your answer. Wow, this is actually quite a good problem. And you have everything in your toolkit in order to figure it out. So I'd like you to pause the video right now and see if you can figure out what the measure of angle NMQ is. All right, well, let's take a look. Now, what do we know? We know that angle NMR is a right angle. Well, what is NMR? NMR is this angle. I could have put the right angle symbol there, but I just want us to all keep in mind that what that means is that that entire measure is 90 degrees. We're also told that the measure of angle NMP is 40 degrees. This is where that three letter naming convention is so, so important. NMP, N M P, that means this angle is 40 degrees. All right. Finally, we're told that the measure of angle R M Q and P M Q have equal measures. And we ultimately want to find the measure of angle N M Q. N M Q. Q. Well, I know NMQ should be 40 degrees plus whatever this is. I just don't know what that is yet. But I do know that this entire rotation is 90 degrees. This portion of it is 40 degrees. So I can say that angle PMR, right, this is 50 degrees. Right? I can say that. So I can say that the measure of angle PM, whoops, PMR is 90 minus 40. We'll fill in some of those missing marks there in a second, which is 50. Now, I still need to know, though, what this little angle here is. But we're told that these two angles have equal measures, that PMQ and RMQ have equal measures. So, of course, I could just take 50 degrees and I could divide it by 2. I'd get 25 degrees. So this is 25 degrees. This is 25 degrees. I'm going to get rid of the 50 now so that it doesn't kind of confuse me too much. And therefore, at the end of the day, angle N, M, Q must be this rotation of 40 plus this rotation of 25. So the measure of angle N, whoops, let's try to make it an N, not an M. N, M, Q is 40 
plus 25 or 65 degrees. Now, we dealt with a lot of different adjacent angle stuff in here. The idea of adjacent angles is the fact that you can add their measures and you can subtract their measures, right? So I know that the measure of this angle plus the measure of this angle plus the measure of this angle, those have got to be 90 because they're all adjacent angles and when placed together they form this entire rotation. So that's the main importance of adjacent angles, this idea that we can add their measures to come up with a, the measure of a larger angle that is comprised of the two adjacent ones. Let's keep moving on and look at different angle pairs. All right, vertical angle pairs. Vertical angles are exceptionally important, all right? They're a little bit difficult to describe mathematically, but we've got the description up there. Vertical angle pairs are angle pairs that share a vertex, so they have to share a vertex, and whose rays point in opposite directions. Whose rays point in opposite directions. Okay, so let's take a look at exercise number two. In the diagram, two lines, AB and CD, intersect at point E. Letter A, name two pairs of vertical angles. All right, well, let's talk about two pairs of vertical angles. Let me pick one angle, okay? Let me take a look at angle AED, right? So AED, all right? Well, what angle will be vertical to that angle? Well, it'll be an angle that shares its vertex, E, but that's actually three other angles on here, at the bare minimum, three other angles here, but whose rays point in the opposite direction. Well, this ray points in the opposite direction of this one, and this ray points in the opposite direction of that one. So the vertical angle pair there will be angle C, E, B, right? And they, they call them vertical angle pairs because again, it's almost like it's one angle sitting on top of the other angle. What's the other vertical angle pair? Pause the video now and write that pair right down here. All right, well, we've got angle A, E, C. and angle D, E, C, right? Vertical angle pairs. Ah, it's not D, E, C, my bad eyesight. It's D, E, B. Sorry about that. Oh, my eyes, my eyes. If I took my glasses off, I couldn't even see three inches in front of my face. Let's take a look at letter B. Using the fact that straight angles have measures of 180 degrees, fill in the rest of the angles in the picture. All right, well, let's talk about this for a second. So believe it or not, having this single angle of 30 degrees allows me to fill in all other three angles on the picture. And the reason that I can do this, this is a very common thing to do in, in geometry, I'd call it a trick, but it's not a trick, is the fact that I know that this, right, is a 180 degree angle. I know that. And because AED is adjacent to DEB, not DEC, but DEB, I can now take that 180, subtract off 30, and I can find this angle, AED, as 150 degrees, right? So that's simple enough, but I can keep using that trick. So in other words, you know, if I erase this and erase this, I can now say that this angle must be 180 degrees, because again, it's a straight angle. This angle is 180. So to figure out this little angle, I can do 180 minus 150, and I'll get 30. And I could do it as well, erase this so that it doesn't so, so visually confusing, and I could say, well, this angle must be 180 degrees, and so this one must be 180 minus 30, or 150 degrees. 
So it's easy. Once I know one of the angles, sort of in a diagram like this, I can use that 180 degree business to work my way around. Now, letter C. What is true about the pairs of vertical angles? This is an amazingly important observation. Pause the video now and write down what you observe about the pairs of vertical angles. Well, AED and CEB, they're both 150 degrees. AEC and DEB, they're both 30 degrees. So what I hope you observed was that vertical angles have equal measures. Vertical angles have equal measures. And look, that's probably not too much of a surprise, right? If you took a couple pieces of wood and you kind of hinged them, right, as one angle gets smaller or larger, the vertical angle to it, the vertical angle paired to it, also gets larger and smaller, right? So it makes all the sense in the world that angles, if you will, sort of across from each other, formed by two straight lines intersecting, right, will have equal measures. Okay, vertical angles have equal measures. Now, a fact like that lends itself so well to algebraic reasoning. Let's take a look at exercise number three. In the diagram, segments MN and PQ intersect at point R such that the measure of angle NRQ is 7x minus 26 and the measure of angle PRM is 4x plus 1. Find the value of x algebraically. Now we've, we've been solving some equations here and there. Sometimes we've added a couple things and set them equal to 180. I think that we had a problem in the last lesson where we just had an algebraic expression that we set equal to 90, right? So the real question is, you know, what is the relationship between these two angles? And in this particular case, those two angles are a vertical angle pair. That means that the two angles must have equal measures, right? Because they're a vertical angle pair, the measure of angle NRQ must equal the measure of angle PRM. But then the algebra would just say, well, the measure of angle NRQ is 7x minus 26. The measure of angle PRM is 4x plus 1. And now I'm off to the races, right? This is what we did in unit one where we had equations that had variables on both sides. So pause the video really quickly, solve this equation, and then let's move on. All right, remember I'm just using the properties of equality to isolate the variable. I think what I'll do to begin with is I'll subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. Remember I can add or subtract anything I want from both sides of the equation as long as it's the same quantity. So I'm gonna subtract a 4x from both sides, 7x minus 4x is 3x. I now have 3x minus 26 is equal to positive 1. I'm now going to get rid of that subtraction by 26 by adding 26 on both sides. And then I'm going to run out of room on my board. So maybe scroll down a little bit. That's going to give me, that's going to give me some crazy stuff. I don't know what just happened there. Um, hopefully my, my eraser will get the job done. Let's try that again. We had 3x minus 26. We added 26 to both sides. We're going to get 3x is equal to 27. We're going to divide both sides by 3. And after some technical glitches, we're going to find that x is equal to 9. All right. Now, again, the fundamental thing that we did here, right, was use geometry to recognize what we should do with these algebraic expressions, specifically the fact that this represented a vertical angle pair. Those angles have got to be equal. I set the two expressions equal. I use my <laughs> solving equations with variables on both sides, and then I reveal the answer at the end. All right, x equals nine. Let's move on and look at some more angle pairs. Here we go. Complementary and supplementary angles pairs. These angle pairs you've probably been exposed to in other courses, but extremely important vocab. Two angles are complementary, also known as complements, if their measures add up to 90 degrees. Two angles are supplementary, or supplements, if their measures add up to 180 degrees. 
And just a little bit of a comment on complementary versus compliments. Complementary is an adjective, right? Oh, that, those two angles are complementary, right? You're describing the angles. Complements is a noun. You could say those two angles are complements of one another. Either way, complementary angles have measures that add up to a right angle, 90 degrees, and supplementary angles are angles that have measures that add up to a straight angle, 180 degrees. So let's take a look at exercise number four. In the diagram shown, points A, B, and C lie on a line, and angle D, B, C is a right angle. Letter A. Name a pair of complementary angles. All right. Well, complementary angles are angles that add up to a right angle or 90 degrees. So, right, here is our 90 degree angle. Now we kind of go back to our adjacent angles again, right? It keeps coming back to adjacent angles, whether it's vertical angles, complementary, supplementary, whatever. So if I want to add up to that 90 degree angle, I'm talking about angle DBE and angle EBC. So angle DBE and angle EBC. Side note, complementary angles don't have to be adjacent. These two are because they share ray BE. And oftentimes, complements are adjacent. But look, I could have an angle sitting over here, 50 degrees, an angle on a completely different diagram, 40 degrees, and those two angles are complementary because their measures add up to 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the second one. Name two pairs of supplementary angles. All right, so now from this diagram, I want to figure out two pairs of angles that when added together give me 180 degrees. I'd like you to try this one on your own, pause the video, and see if you can come up with these two pairs of supplementary angles. All right, well one of them that's kind of cool and easy is that we actually have two right angles on this picture. Any two right angles together are supplementary because one of them is 90, the other one's 90, 90 and 90 is 180, and we move on with the world. So, one of those angles is ABD, and the other angle is angle DBC. So, one angle pair, angle ABD, and angle DBC. All right. But now the other pair. This one's a little bit more subtle, and in fact, I'm gonna erase the right angle markings on here because they're not helpful, all right? The other supplementary angle pair would be this angle, ABE, and this angle, EBC. Those two, when placed together, clearly also make a straight angle or a 180 degree angle. So I could say angle ABE, and angle E, B, C, all right? There are, there is only one pair of complementary angles on the picture, but two pairs of supplementary. Let's take a look at letter C. The measure of angle D, B, E is 36 degrees more than that of angle C, B, E. Find the measure of angle C, B, E. All right, so, now we're gonna do a little bit of algebraic modeling, right? I'm being told that the measure of angle DBE is 36 degrees more than CBE. All right, let's do a little bit of algebra here, right? Let's set up an equation that will model this process. In fact, let me let, let, me let the measure of angle CBE be equal to X. I want to put that on my diagram. I'm also going to erase these things. So CBE is this, right? I'm going to call that X. All right, well, I know that the measure of angle DBE is 36 degrees more than CBE, so it must be X plus 36, right? This is just algebraically modeling the measure of both angles based on the thing I'm looking for, which is the measure of angle CBE. Now, of course, I want to further model and set up an equation that allows me to solve for x. Well, what is the relationship between these two angles? 
Uh, they're complementary. I did that up here. And complementary angles have measures that when added together are equal to 90. So I've got x plus x plus 36 is all equal to 90. And that truly models this problem and is going to give me a way to find CBE. Why don't you pause the video now and solve this problem? All right, easy enough. One thing that we might want to do is we might want to combine these two x's, give myself a little bit more room. That's going to be 2x plus 36 is equal to 90. I now I have my beautiful two step equation. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. Again, you know, if you want, have your calculator out while you're doing this. 90 minus 36 is equal to 54. I'm now going to divide both sides by 2. And 54 divided by 2 leaves me with 27. Awesome. There we go. Algebraic modeling of a geometric situation. Let's keep going. Uh, geometry and algebra. Exercise number five. In a supplementary angle pair, the larger angle has eight times the measure of the smaller angle. Find the measure of the larger angle. Awesome. Well, I'd like you to try to algebraically model this one on your own and try to figure out using the algebra what the measure of the larger angle is. Go ahead and pause the video now and take a few minutes to do this. Well, do you notice that the measure of the larger angle is eight times the measure of the smaller angle? In other words, the measure of the larger angle is based on the measure of the smaller angle. So I'm going to kind of start my modeling like this. I'm going to let the measure, whoops, where's my F of, that doesn't look like an F, the smaller angle is equal to X. All right, so the measure of the smaller angle is equal to x. That means the measure of the larger angle is equal to 8x, right? I mean, that's just what it means to be 8 times the measure of the smaller angle. So the smaller angle is x, the larger is 8x. Now, I know that what I'm looking for is the larger angle. I get that. But if I let that be x, then the smaller angle would have to be x divided by 8, or 1 8 times x. If you're comfortable with fractions, if you love division, awesome. If not, do it this way. Now, how do I form an equation that allows me to solve for x? Well, I'm told that these two angles are supplementary. Supplementary. So this is where I need to know that supplementary angles add up to 180. And once I know that, once I realize, ah, add to 180 degrees, or apparently 10 degrees, add to 180 degrees, then I can say that x plus 8x is equal to 180 degrees. This is a relatively easy equation now to solve. 8x plus x is 9x. Sometimes the easy equations are harder though because you're expecting more. Divide both sides by 9 and x equals 20 degrees. Now beware of an algebra trap, which is, oh, I solved for x, I'm done, right? In the last problem we were, but in this particular problem, x equals 20 is the smaller angle. I'm looking for the larger angle. Now there's two ways to do it. One way to do it is say, well, they're supplementary. So if the smaller angle is 20, the larger angle is 180 minus 20, so 160. The other way of doing it is saying, well, x was the smaller angle, the larger angle is 8 times x, and therefore the larger angle is 8 times 20, or 160 degrees. All right, algebraic modeling of geometry. Let's wrap it up. Today we saw the first few sets of angle pairs, and we're going to see a lot more. We saw adjacent angle pairs, they're extremely important because we're oftentimes adding or subtracting the measures of their angles from one another, right? We also saw vertical angle pairs, which were critically important because they have the same measure. 
Finally, we also looked at complementary angle pairs, which are angles that add up to 90 degrees, and supplementary angle pairs, angles that add up to 180 degrees. Unfortunately, all of this terminology is terminology that we're going to be using that will come up in problems, and if you don't know it, well then you'll be hamstrung. You won't be able to solve the problems. So make sure you really buckle down and memorize all of the jargon, all of the terminology. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 8 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.